Hi everyone, welcome. As you can see down here in my wormery, I've got a good many systems that I need to keep up with. Keep them all busy, keep them all fed. And with the way things are right now, with me checking two bins at a time in some cases, I'm able to get back to a bin after checking all the other ones, sort of sequentially and then going right back to the finish in a matter of about 12 or 14 days at the current time. But today we're going back to the bin that was only checked in on seven days ago. It's these African night crawlers that have been doing this interesting little cotton composting test for us. And it's not only the active current cotton composting test, which is the third one, we've already done two previous tests. So we're going to get these little guys back up onto the bench after only seven days since the last check-in, see how that towel's doing. So let's get started. So now the reason I thought it was interesting to come back after only a seven day pause since the last check-in is because of the current day count on the count on the uh, cotton composting test number three that we're in progress with right now. So it's been 21 days since that towel went in here. And I guess the reason 21 is interesting is because the last cotton composting test, which only ended a little, you know, a few weeks ago, that ended after 22 days. And uh, I was just curious if we were to come back in a, a, a shorter period of time than 22 days, would we find that the, you know, the towel's already gone, making 21 days the new uh, record? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I know there's always that matter of the variables and the controls and the, every, you know, everything else like that. So this stuff is all so informal. You would never be able to go to the bank with those types of numbers but you know we do our best to be consistent and uh observant because <laughs> it is all for fun right so i um i do remember the towel was kind of unfolded out here and not too far below the surface and it's red white and blue so if we say anything's red white or blue any traces of that those would be the towel i am trying to you know do this pretty carefully a lot of times like here if you start moving stuff and a lot of stuff around it starts moving too you know you're onto a, a large object but unfortunately I chose a kind of um, a large object material to feed with last time I took the towel and I coated it in chunks of cantaloupe and banana and those chunks of banana peel are always going to come across as like a larger single piece of material very much the way the fabric would if you came across the fabric and I guess even some of these cantaloupe melon rinds <laughs> making me question why did I elect to feed them that well, I guess it's one of those hindsights 2020 but now now that I've actually managed to latch onto a, a larger object an object much larger than these um, cantaloupe rinds or banana peels, I do believe we're onto the still surviving towel. It's got to be it, right? Yep, definitely. I can see some of the blue over here. This must be some of the white section. And there's some good worm traffic on that thing. <laughs> Worms in and out of it. Not to mention a good many springtails on it as well. So the, um, the test obviously continues. And, well, what I bought for them today is a bunch of stuff that I think is going to help the test chug along nicely going forward. Although it includes more banana peel. <laughs> but I guess, I don't know. It was fortunate that I took the banana, because it was a whole banana, not just the peel, that I um, cut into these little rings. So that's why we've got some of these banana peels are actually still kind of holding together as as a ring, you know, after all the soft insides of it have been nibbled away. This must be the stem of the banana. Ooh, yeah, cool. <laughs> and more cantaloupe, or no, this must be more towel. Alrighty, well, oh boy, what do we got going on here? All right, I think I just saw a flash of red, like this big blob of red, and I thought it was a whole bunch of just worms. <laughs> So, all right, I'm being a little bit sloppy here. We're not doing a good job kind of keeping the 
fabric bits together, but we'll try to keep them over in that corner as we stumble on them. We could collect them all up and we'll once again strategically position the next feeding all over that towel to make sure we're, well, I don't know about make sure, but you know, make a best effort to maximize warm traffic onto the fabric, on and around the fabric. Hopefully getting lots of worms to adopt it as a material that they can nibble on and help break down. A little bit surprising though, considering that the last towel managed to get um, broken down in within 22 days or maybe even well before that, that day when we stopped in after which it had been 22 days. I can even see some, um, some of the melon on this rind here remains. Yeah, you know, we only gave them seven days in this instance. Usually we don't get to see how things look in my bins with such a short interval between feedings. I'm a little bit more accustomed to coming back to my systems um, with a little bit more time in between the check-ins. Very nice, lots of springtails. I've somehow grown to become desensitized to them being there. <laughs> but I think I even heard, I think it was Anne, one of the other warm channels, somebody mentioning how the springtails kind of freak them out a little bit too. I was, um, I was gonna say, not only you, <laughs> me too. All right, let me get their food ready. Gotta get some bedding too. I had to be careful. I found these little guys on my glove I was really worried that they were going to creep off, but they're um, they're so tiny that it's not surprising I almost missed them. So I'm glad that I was able to spot one of them, and then it, you know, prompted me to just look around a little bit more on my glove to see who else I see. But um, I imagine they're anxious to get back into their cozy bedding. Well. Some of these little guys are pretty feisty and fast moving and I imagine these bright lights are the main thing they're trying to clear away from. It looks like a couple of these didn't even budge so perhaps that short period of time they had being exposed to the air was just enough to let them dry out. So it just goes to show how sensitive these little guys are when they're this small still. So. Let's move on. I've got towel, um, paper, not paper towels, napkins. Napkins that I'd like to do away with as part of the bedding we're going to drop in here. My idea for applying the food was to um, maybe sandwich the towel bits that remain in between chunks of the food that we're giving to them. So let me uh, show you. Picture is always worth a thousand words. So I'm just laying down one of the napkins I wanted to try to get rid of as well as some of my prepared bedding onto which I thought we could lay down a nice bed of banana peel. It's been um, a little while since I took it out of the freezer so you can see it's beginning to thaw out making it plenty flexible for me to spread out over here. And then I thought that on top of that can come the towel bits and then into that and on top of that could come the rest of that delicious food that you might have caught a glimpse of a moment ago when I grabbed the banana peel. I got celery, I see tomato, peppers, maybe we'll see some other things in there too. I guess the only bummer is, oops, see, I gotta be careful. I, I always prefer to just let the worm bin be attestable to all the damage that occurs in one of these fabric composting tests. It seems like me tearing away at it isn't really sportsmanlike <laughs> kind of cheating. So um, if it's all about seeing how the worm bin breaks down the fabric then let the worm bin do it. And 
there on top of that was going to come all the rest of this lovely frozen vegetable matter some of it already showing signs of frost collecting on it and as this stuff all starts to thaw out and melt it's going to drop all of its lovely juices down onto the fabric and into the bedding and I got a feeling that that's going to be a real popular place for the worms to be hanging out and what the heck let's give them one more napkin yeah, these are the African night crawlers they definitely like these bedding type materials they'll chomp on paper and cardboard and leaves and all those other sort of bedding type materials treating it just like the lovely kitchen scraps in fact sometimes I wonder if they even favor these sorts of things over your typical kitchen scraps perhaps they do so I did have my grit on standby here and I usually sprinkle it onto the foods that I'm giving them but I'm sure they can still recognize what this is and pick it up if they need it I don't think it necessarily has to be laid out right there next to their food for them to recognize that they've got some nice useful grit over there that they can uh, pick up if they wish and then these leftover bits you know maybe putting them down in the feeding zone a little bit deeper would have been a good idea but at this point I'm just glad I didn't totally space out and forget about them <laughs> at least we'll get them down into the middle too and then that basically makes the middle of the bin the hot spot for worm composting action and once we cover up we'll mark that spot with our feeding zone indicator but really quick I wanted to take a peek through here just to get a little sense of moisture you know I've got other systems that are covered only in a newspaper the way this one is but don't forget this one also had a, a sheet of cardboard on top of the newspaper most likely providing a lot more protection than if it were just that single sheet of newspaper is that another hunk of fabric <laughs> all right I think it might be so I'm gonna try to position it where it sort of belongs but at this point this ain't rocket science so we don't need to be that precise so part of the um Part of the uh, restoration of this system, putting everything back on and covering up the way we found it, I was thinking might benefit from just a little bit of plastic just to create a somewhat higher moisture zone than elsewhere in the bin. And that would most likely cause, you know, increased worm traffic at the surface, causing the worms to nibble at the feeding zone indicator on this. They'll nibble on the, um, they'll also nibble on the, the top paper. And that's all good too. I got no problem with that so I thought that that might be a, a good way to do that and we can just bring the cardboard back this will just serve as a shade so that that area stays nice and dark so that worms are um, not put off at the idea of hanging out there due to daylight streaming into the wormery so I think that is it yep we're done all right everyone that's it for the video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye now